Well, hey everyone, welcome back uh, to Nintendo Prime. Another special video for you guys that I did not plan. This is how it goes sometimes. We have so much breaking news, Switch Pro, and then some additional information from Samus Hunter, who has been talking to Andres Restart here behind the scenes. That's why I have Andres Restart here with you guys right now. Want to say hi, man? Hello there. How are you guys doing? Yeah, so uh, we'll get into the Switch Pro stuff first, and then we'll get into the other stuff. This is going to be kind of a shorter discussion video. Uh, and I'll let you guys know right now, there's going to be another discussion video between me and Andre on some of this stuff, but in a different viewpoint uh, over on his channel. So please go check out Andre's Restart to check out that video as well. And whatever else he decides to cover around, it sounds like he's got some really cool ideas uh, percolating for a lot of this information. So first, let's dive into the Switch Pro stuff since I've already reported on this, already uh, been through this uh, once and know all the information, and he hasn't had a chance to dive too deep into it. Uh, so here's what's happening with Switch Pro. Uh, just to recap in a more calmed down version of myself compared to my initial video. Um, Takahashi Machizuki, who's been on top of the Switch Pro stuff for, since day one. He's been reporting on this thing for two and a half, three years, dating back, um, you know, Bloomberg, uh, dating back to other outlets he used to work at, like Wall Street Journal. Uh, and he's really putting a flag in the ground right now. Uh, he has talked about for the 7-inch OLED uh, display, 4K output when docked. That's all stuff that came from him. He was the one who told us that, that we're getting this. Samsung company display is providing the displays. He talked about how it's going to go into mass production in July, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and obviously, I took all this to mean, well, mass production in July can't be releasing soon. Maybe end of year, you know, we're not going to see this thing at E3. There's no point to even think we're going to see it at E3 because, hello, um, it's not going into production till the month after E3. So that why would you kill Switch sales? But here's the deal. Takahashi Matsuzuki broke a report in the middle of the night uh, because he lives in Japan, so for him it's daytime. And he has put out there now that the Nintendo Switch Pro is a couple big things. One, releasing in either September or October. Not even He's not even speculating. He's straight up saying September or October. One of those two months, he's not sure which one. They're right next to each other. Switch Pro is coming then. Two, Switch Pro is going to be announced likely before E3, if not at E3. Now, the reasoning he says before E3 is his sources are saying Nintendo wants the announcement to land before E3, so all of their partners that are working on games that will take advantage of the Switch Pro can show off those games during E3. It's one of those, this is kind of the overall marketing plan. They have a lot of partners that are making games that take advantage of the, of the, of the system, and so they are trying to push everything uh, to so so E3 could basically be about Switch Pro at this point. Um, that's kind of what Nintendo seems to be aiming at here. So I want to toss this over to Andre because I already did a reaction video on this once, but we're going to go back and forth here a little bit. This is the first time we really got into the deep news with you on this. What are your thoughts here on what they're doing here with the Switch Pro? And do you, I mean, do we do we believe this guy? He he works at Bloomberg. Yes. Um, so I have uh, Takashi Mochizuki here on Twitter. He's got. The, the little check mark verified, uh, which <laughs> tends to add sort of that little bit of credence and credibility to whatever he says. Um, this is one of the, this is the Bloomberg report. And, and he broke the Switch Lite. To be clear, he was yeah. the one who told us all the deets on Switch Lite and was 100% correct. So um, I guess the thing about this is that there are going to be people who will say, oh, Bloomberg has been saying Switch Pro for years and it hasn't <laughs> happened. Well, um, they were right about the Switch Lite, right? Um, and, oh, and this could have been in development for the, years, too. Yeah, it's been it's been in the works for a while, exactly. So, I I, I this is one of those things that I take seriously, right? Like, um, this is it's like if there's like a tiering system of terms of like how credible do we take this? It's not as credible as Nintendo themselves coming out and saying Switch no. Pro, yeah. but it's certainly far more credible than a random Reddit post or. Uh, 4chan post, right? I would say... Yeah. Or, or I mean, I mean, I'd argue even possibly more credible than someone like Samus Hunter, who we cover all the time. Yeah, someone who I doesn't mean, have a name out there. We can't. We don't know who this person is. We can't verify things necessarily. Right. This is a guy that's a li literal journalist, works for major yeah. news outlets, lives in the country, clearly has contacts in manufacturing, been right several times in the past about stuff with Nintendo. It's one of those trackable history, public figure, works at major outlet that's why in my thing i didn't even call it a rumor this is a report this is coming yeah, it, from a, it, a verified news outlet yeah it, it is it is a report right now i guess 
the interesting thing is that when we're getting information about stuff that isn't like made official by Nintendo, mm-hmm. there is that room for error or misinterpretation, yeah. sure. or perhaps plans can change because development is fluid for both hardware and software. Yeah. So there, there is there is room for error here. You can def- definitely take it with a grain of salt. But this is very likely based off real information. And if we're already talking about like release timing for September to October, then this is around the corner. And as as you mentioned, like this is supposedly getting announced ahead of E3, right? So yeah. we're we're gonna be hearing about this really soon. Um, which is very, very interesting. There's a whole bunch of implications why we're oh, probably boy. gonna do our separate discussion trying to piece it all together. Um, but I believe this. Uh, for sure. Um, it's also one of those things like, you know, I maybe won't 100% believe it until it's actually <laughs> said, but it's sure. kind of like an expectation. Yeah, it, it adds an air of believability to this because, like, all of the major reports about Switch Pro come from someone like Takahashi Machizuki. You know, there's rumors and other people that throw things out there, but he's been the lead dog on this, nailed everything with the Switch Lite, and he's never in the past said when the system is coming, right? Uh, the last time he said anything about it was, oh, you know, the target is sometime in 2021. But, you know, that was really it. He just kind of left it all vague. Could be delayed. Could be this or that. And now he's just coming out literally right now. No, this thing is imminently being announced. And it's coming out in this sometime in this two-month window. He doesn't know the exact date because the people he does doesn't know it. They just know when, the you know, based on orders or based on whatever he knows from manufacturing. Nintendo refusing the comment. That's pretty typical. Uh, but at least he does reach out to Nintendo to see if I they want to question for you. Sure. Because um, sure. I haven't had a chance to read the full article. Yep. Um, but I'm just kind of looking at the headline on Twitter, which says, exclusive new Nintendo Switch, which would replace current 299 models, yep. is planned for release in September or October, and now it's going to be imminent yep. at E3. So when he says there in the headline, would replace current 299 models, yes. he is mentioned- that just maybe like a version 3.0? And the Switch Pro, the 4K upscaling one, comes a little bit later. I don't think so. Because um, he mentions that it's the same model in the article as he was talking about or earlier with the 7-inch OLED display and the 4K output. He says it's all the same model. Now, one thing he mentioned in the article when he talks specifically about that point, I'm glad you brought it up because I totally forgot to mention that. Uh, if he's, he's, in the second paragraph, I just clicked on it. It says, likely to be priced higher than $299. Yeah. So the implication yeah. being... Yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's going to be more expensive than $299. Uh, but it is supposed to replace the base model. So the Switch Lite's going to be running. So it's going to run along the Switch Lite. Uh, this base model is going to get replaced by this eventually. It's going to be a slow phasing out of the... So basically, the, the current base model is going to probably be available through this holiday, is, is the way yeah. I kind of view that. And then they'll phase it out uh, in the springtime next year, and it's just going to be Switch Pro, which also leads me to believe, price point-wise, higher than $299, but going to replace the original. I originally thought Switch Pro might come in at $399. Now I'm thinking, well, if it's going to replace it and phase it out, I'm thinking now $349 sounds maybe a bit more realistic since it's going to, it's got to kind of split the difference to replace the old model, but also be more powerful. And then obviously that's going to make the Switch Lite look like even bigger of a value buy at at $199 as well down the line. Because that's probably still going to be using the older hardware, I presume. And all this kind of connects together too with, uh, you know, NVIDIA throwing out there that, hey, like, we're, we want to stop making Tegra X1s. Well, I mean, this is one way the most high demand model of Switch is still the base model Switch. If you can replace that and then eventually down downsize the, the Switch Pro chips to using the light, I mean, it kind of works, I think. I don't know. I, this, this is like, we don't know. We're in such an unknown territory. But to have this news break that, hey, this isn't just like something that's getting announced like in a few months. No, within 14 days. We're going to hear about this thing. And he does know there's only, name-wise, the final name of the product is set in stone, apparently. He says that in here. But it's only known by a handful of people in Kyoto at the moment. Um, which means they, have, there. They, haven't passed the, there. Yeah, they haven't passed the marketing material for it yet, Switch apparently. Plus. I'm Switch plus. putting it out there. I'm not saying I know the name. That's New true. Nintendo it's Switch. Purely, new Nintendo maybe Switch. New, maybe that. But my <laughs> I hate that name, by the way. Weird. Oh has been Nintendo Switch Plus. That's been my prediction. I Super Switch. Put it out there. Super Switch is one that's, that's gone around. Yeah, I, I like Super Switch. So, I, I like Plus. I like that. I like the Plus. Which, Super Switch sounds really cool. Like, my hesitance with that one is just that if you go back to the NES and then the Super NES, it was to sort of imply next generation. Yeah, sure. And this 
is more of a mid-gen refresh. Now, granted, well, that was over 20 years ago. Yeah. And I would hope, ago, and I would hope so, whenever uh, the new generation comes, if it's still a Switch style system, that they would just call it Switch 2 and get rid of the confusion. But I mean, yeah. this is Nintendo. They don't use numbers. Well, I mean, they did Nintendo 64, but that was this to time they the maybe so, because yeah. it's, they. I feel like you know when you, when you look at Switch, um, it's it's something that works that the general well, masses appreciate and understand. We also have and to consider why PlayStation Two, Three, Four, Five. That all makes well, sense. Works. They yeah. So well. What if Nintendo no longer has to be through this sort of vicious cycle where one system is a viral success, the next system is a terrible failure, and then it's up and down? What would it there's be nice also, to see some consistency? There's also a thought process, and I've, I've had this thought for a while, that what if like there is no such thing as a next generation Switch? What if they just ride the Switch family and keep releasing upgraded versions like every three, four years, nonstop, and they never call it Switch 2? It's always just that next switch that's just part of the whole family as they slowly, like they're planning to phase out the OG switch apparently, they just phase out old models as new models come in, but they never call it a next-gen system or make a big deal out of it being a next-generation yeah. system. What they do is maybe that if you have like, like phones, switch, sort right, of. or the oldest one, eventually they say, hey, look, at this point, this will no longer be the newer software. You'll have yeah. to pick up the next piece of hardware, but it'll be like every six to eight years. So if people complain, it won't really be an appropriate complaint to consider that beforehand you would get four to five years. Oh yeah. So yeah, so maybe that can. So let's transition a little bit. You got some 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 breaking news here, kind of from Samus Hunter. Not out there publicly yet. She hasn't tweeted anything yet, as far as I'm aware. I've been on Twitter refreshing. Yeah, she's tweeted about a lot, but uh, she's tweeted she tweeted about a lot, but she hasn't said some of the specific stuff. So uh, why don't you share with us uh, what what you got from Samus Hunter here? Sure, sure. So um. Again, we're going to be talking about all of this more in, in with my with our recording on my end of things too, right? So we're going to yep. kind of continue to sort of delve into this. Yep, even but, deeper. Uh, yep. It, it seems like this is maybe news, maybe. So I'll, I'll go ahead and sort of just read like a piece of a dialogue I had with Sam <laughs> earlier today. So I came to her after the Legend of Arceus sort of news because I've been trying to put together a video that may still happen. But anyway, I'll just go ahead and read what what I sort of asked her, and then I'll give her you guys. So, I'm currently working on a video about the Pokemon release dates and what it says about the rest of Nintendo's plan. Basically, there are three games we're looking at. Gen 9 Pokemon, Splatoon 3, and Breath of the Wild 2. With Legends Arceus coming January, it leaves the March spot open. Do you think it's possible Splatoon 3 releases before the end of the fiscal year of March? She then replies with two fairly sizable paragraphs. For the next mainline Pokemon games after Legends, Yes, they are planned for late 2022, likely a new gen looking how TPC wanted to release Legends as early as possible. Breath of the Wild 2 was initially planned as one of the last games for 2021, and I personally can see December release if the de if development goes well. For Splatoon 3, it's planned as an early 2022 title, so before the end of the fiscal year, like March, it's a strong possibility. Maybe something could shift if Breath of the Wild 2 gets delayed, but usually Nintendo doesn't like to shift fiscal years for release games. So the big news here is that Splatoon 3 apparently could is be a, an early 2022 yeah, title, it, it's 2020 a, title for the fiscal year. In other words, if Pokemon Legends is coming up this January, January. that leaves February or March for Splatoon 3, and which could have a whole bunch of implications. And if you look at Nintendo's history with Switch, they seem to have a big game almost every March. Every March. Yeah. Animal Crossing last time. Um, you know, we had Breath of the Wild before that during the launch. I can't remember Monster if Monster Hunter this year. Yeah, Monster Hunter this year. Uh, I'm trying to remember what happened in twenty eighteen. Uh, I feel like there was something. Twenty eighteen might be the exception. Uh yeah. twenty nine I don't I don't remember. Yeah, I feel there... like there was something. It might have even been like a port game. I can't remember. There was there was something yeah. in twenty eighteen. But uh and then obviously coming up, we know well, I, I was presuming that it was gonna be Pokemon in March, and then we got the date for January, so it's like Okay, well, what's the March game? Is that going to be Breath of the Wild 2? And now we have her saying, uh, no, uh, Splatoon 2 is actually planned to be early 2022, which might not be that surprising considering this is one of the earliest 2022 games announced, and so was Pokemon Legends Arceus announced right around the same time. So it's sort of like, okay, then maybe they're both there. Maybe that's their, their pair for early 2022. And if that's the case, and Breath of the Wild isn't a holiday 2022 game, because we can't rule out that Breath of the Wild 2 might be a holiday 2022 game we don't know and it is going to come out this year 
Well, not only does her December talk possibly matter because Nintendo has released big games in September. Can't forget Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, 20 plus million seller released in December. Now Switch Pro coming out potentially September, October, and all that possible conversation leading to Breath of the Wild 2 potentially being that Switch Pro combo launch. And you look at the launch timing. October might be it. Maybe. I don't know. Coming together, right? It's like yeah. it's like a puzzle. Um, it, it, it seems like everything is starting to make sense. Maybe it sounds too good to be true, but if you just kind of think about it, right? Like, Splatoon 3 seems so far along. And if we are going to be getting a tournament at E3, I feel like it's highly indicative that the game is around the corner and a March release date isn't really that crazy. And to, as to your point, right? Like, Legends of Arceus is technically announced after Splatoon 3, and it's coming out before Splatoon 3. So, and if you just looking at the footage, like, Splatoon 3 looks far more polished like, well to development than Legends of Arceus, yeah. is, right? Granted, like, game way more polished. Internal Nintendo, but still. <laughs> not, not a fair competition. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> It's, but it's not out of the question that this no, could actually be the case. Not, not at all. This is just, it's all fascinating right now because we've both been covering rumors and reports and all that heading up to E3 here. Can't ignore it. E3's around the corner, okay? Two weeks away, we're going to be E3 and out. Well, I guess three weeks from now is technically all over, but it's, I, well, here's the thing. We've already had a whole bunch of news dropping this week, right? I mean, even coming up, we, we still have Sonic Anniversary stuff coming, apparently, on, on the 27th. Uh, just like this past day, we had Dragon Quest and Monster Hunter things happening. Uh, you know, we, we have Sony dropping a, a thing. We're in the period where, yeah, E3 is coming, but all this news keeps dropping ahead of time. And we kind of probably still expect a Pokemon Presents, maybe even somewhere in the next couple of weeks before E3, to at least see footage. Like, yeah, we got dates. But we didn't see footage, right? It was kind of weird to get release dates without footage and trailers attached. It was really, really weird way to get release dates. But yeah, it makes me skeptical of a Pokemon Presents, even though normally I, I was like, I was actually planning on having like a Pokemon Presents prediction yeah. video for tomorrow until we got the release date. So now I'm, yeah. not, I'm not sure. It's one, it's one of those like, weird. are they doing that because there won't be a Presents and they're going to save all the footage for E3? Or are they doing that because. Um, you know, even like Samus Hunter didn't say, she said, I didn't see this coming. Like, who knew they were going to drop dates before, you know, she still told me they're out of it that, you know, there is going to be a present still, but obviously the dates are out. What the hell does that even mean? Why are they doing this? And I don't know, maybe they're trying to set people up to be like, okay, you know what's coming in, in November, you know what's coming in January, you know what games we have announced. Maybe they want people speculating and hyping things up for E3. That could be possible. This is a different Nintendo, a business-oriented Nintendo, one that wants to make money, and the money's at the hype. You build the hype, you let the fans build up the hype and the anticipation, and bada-bing, bada-boom, you sell millions and millions and millions and millions of copies of things, even if they end up maybe not as good as maybe you want them to be. Um, I'm not going to reference any specific game there. I'm just saying that this is just kind of how the cycle's gone with Nintendo, good, bad, or otherwise. All their games are selling at gangbusters, and they're letting fans get hyped I mean, think about how many times they've mentioned Breath of the Wild 2 so far without giving us news. EJ Noah comes on. Hey, we know you want to see it. We need a little bit more time. Hey. Like, not talking about it kind of makes it more rabid for the information. Yeah. Right? Metro Prime 4. Cool. Don't know anything, right? Bayonetta 3. Development's going well. I think I've heard that 30 times in the last year. <laughs> right. That's but when these things, when they find divulge information, people will freak out there these, these yep. trailers are going to be trending uh they're going to perform really well in terms of visibility it's going to yep. be great marketing um Amazing and marketing. I, I think nintendo probably knows what they're doing you know and you bring this full circle just imagining that nintendo is somehow considering dropping the bomb on switch pro right before e3 like you know setting aside the information you got it starts to make things like remember how good splatoon 3 looked like, it just looked unbelievable compared to Splatoon 2. And you're sitting there like, okay, maybe Splatoon 2 was built out the Wii U engine. This is all new thing, all new visuals. That was my thought process. But now I'm like, but what if that was actually Switch Pro footage? And they just didn't tell anybody. And that's yeah, why I, it looked I so crisp. Like, like I think it was like 4K. Go on. 
Yeah, I was gonna say, what if it was like 4K downsampled to 1080p for YouTube? It's kind of what I'm because downsampled 4K looks of just a smidge crisper than native 4K. But that's just my thought process on that. Of course. Yeah, I, I did, it did, the thought definitely crossed my mind at least. Um, we we've seen them do weird things where we see the trailer and then they put out like <laughs> actual images that are shot like natively at 1080p and they look a lot better than actual in-game sure um it, it's we've seen weird things like that i've actually heard a lot of people complain that from some things in three, like it still seems fairly early on but i thought it looked pretty good um it looked good for it, it, it's pretty typical for nintendo games in general though like if they're more than a year out when we see them even when it's within a year of release by the time we see that final product there is a noticeable difference in how the game looks and runs yeah it, sometimes it they have placeholders kind of it, you know when they're the footage is, hey this is a placeholder we're still working on that asset this just looks good enough we just dragged this out of a prior Splatoon game or some other asset we had laying around like it, it it's something that happens um you know quite often i even look at you know something like breath of the wild people didn't talk about it much because it already looked so good in 2016 but by the time it came out i mean it was just that much better the, the frame rate was just that much smoother uh some of the textures just looked that much better the physics were just a hair more responsive compared to when I played at E3. It was one of those, yeah, that game was pretty close to being done, and there were still you know, pretty significant improvements heading up to launch. So, it, yeah, this is just, guys, this is insane. Uh, we're in the lead-up to E3. This is just news bombs dropping everywhere. At this point, we don't have to wait long to find out if Takahashi Machizuki knows what the hell he's talking about. Because it's either getting announced before E3 or it's getting announced at E3. And honestly, yeah. if Nintendo is actually you know, worried about their partners who might be putting pressure on them to announce it so they can show footage at E3 of Switch Pro versions of games, then, I mean, this is another speculation just to toss to the wind. Microsoft's going day two. Is Nintendo going day one before all the third-party publishers go so they can get Switch Pro out there as well? That's just something to throw out in case they don't reveal Switch Pro before E3 and they want to use E3 to announce it. I, I can't believe I'm even talking about Switch Pro at E3. I can't even... Yeah, I, I always expect it to be happening months later, right? September. It, 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 it's, yeah, I've been it, betting it, September all year. Oh, it's September. That's what they did with the light. September, release in November. All right. And that was only with the, that's only with the assumption that it makes it out for this year, right? Like, yeah. It was supposedly coming out for by the fiscal year, right? And at I, that point, maybe we expect a reveal in January. But if it's getting revealed right before E3, then... Oh my God. September, like, October like this, makes a lot of sense. This isn't just a nobody putting this out there. This isn't a rumor monger. This is someone who's talking to people who are assembling these things right now, like making yeah. them and getting them out to you know developers who are who got dev units. Like this is, I'll and they don't this. and they don't even know the name of it, which is kind of crazy. This but is I, something we do know. Um, yes, straight straight from the this is straight from Nintendo, right? Yes. You already know about this, but yeah, it, it basically. Well, there was a report from Nikkei that they want to put out like 30 million uh, pieces of Switch hardware yeah. for the fiscal year. Nintendo themselves said 25.5 to their investors recently. Yep. That's maybe them lowballing a little bit, right? Because you, you don't want to you, you don't want to mislead your investors, right? You, if yeah. anything, you you underestimate, you don't overestimate. Yep. So, but 25.5 million is still a ridiculous <sighs> amount. Keep in mind, I think what last year they sold about 28, and that was a record year by far. So if they have a year that's comparable to that now, when COVID circumstances are sort of diminishing, that suggests that they have a lot of strong hardware and software to support it. And yeah, so and here's and here's my thing Breath too. Breath of the Wild Two, Splatoon, Legends Arceus, and maybe a Switch Pro would all come out not right before the end of the year. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Also, also he notes he notes in here. I was just glancing through it again. Uh, he notes that. People are obviously going to be concerned. There's no way Nintendo's going to release it that soon. They're not going to be able to... There's going to be short part shortage. He notes that the SoC and everything they're using internally, uh, Nintendo has absolutely zero issue getting those parts because the, the part orders for those are not in competition with any other product on the market. So whatever the hell Nintendo's using, they're the only people using it. Yeah, and it's also possible that Nintendo's been planning for a long time. If they you know, made requests well before the shortages and the it, well, yeah, that's true. Is, the order would have been in like a year ago. Make any. Yeah, it's they would have. They, they need to. There's a lot more requests now, right? Yeah, so they said. They said the hard. only thing that they that could potentially be a problem, something like Bluetooth chips, are in competition with a bunch of people. But, yeah, but um, I, I feel like what may happen um, is 
that there will be hardware out there to get. But if it's one of those situations where Nintendo fails to understand how much demand there will be, yep. they won't be able to quickly recoup and that, that supply so they can meet the demand. That's, yeah. I think, the issue here. There will be some supply. There yep. just won't be... If, if there's if the demand beats out that supply too quickly, Nintendo may not be able to respond as quickly as they've done. Yeah. All right, well, I want to thank Andres Restar for coming out for this quick discussion. Be sure to head on over to his channel because probably around the same time this is up, he will have his, his discussion with me up as well, and we're going to go even deeper. I'm even holding back some thoughts I have right now just specifically for that discussion because we're going to be deep diving pretty big over there. And as always, tune into other videos. I will probably be doing a daytime live stream uh, for you guys because I won't be able to stream at night because I have some friends coming over to watch a Milwaukee Bucks playoff game. Uh, so we, we will get a stream going during the day. There's too much to talk about, right, guys? Too much. And this is before we even get into the day and new news happens because there seems to be news happening every single day. Crazy. So, yeah, this is crazy. Oh, by we'll the way, I haven't told you. I'm actually a Heat fan. So our teams are Oh, boy. Yeah. Be, be ready to yeah. go down 3-0 tomorrow. Be ready to go down. But, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Not looking uh, good for old have... Jimmy Butler over there. <laughs> I hope Jimmy Butler plays better. But uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do part two for this discussion really soon. So yep. make sure to, to tune in. Yep.